Hello, I'm Dr. Jared Younger. I'm director of the Neuroinflammation Pain and Fatigue Laboratory. And this week, I want to talk about something that is quite important, and that's a rare opportunity to get your thoughts heard at the highest levels of research policy and research funding decisions, and a chance for your ideas to actually shape the course of research. So what I'm talking about is uh, National Institutes of Health, NIH, has been getting close to releasing the MECFS roadmap, so the Myalgic Encephalomyelitis Chronic Fatigue Syndrome Roadmap. And this roadmap is basically a document that's going to set MECFS research priorities for the next several years. Now, this is particularly about MECFS, but I've been involved in this process now for quite a while, and I can tell you that it's going to have implications uh, far beyond MECFS. It's going to affect fibromyalgia, Gulf War illness, long COVID, sleep disorders, cognitive disorders, dysautonomia, mast cell disorders. A lot of things are going to be uh, included in this research plan. So the the whole process looks like it's taking about a year in its entirety. There were several stages. Most of those have already been done. You might have caught the NIH webinars on MECFS that were happening last year and this year, that was part of this roadmap effort. Uh, gathering the experts and doing presentations and having meetings about the information and using that to develop uh, research priorities. So all this is going to accumulate in a document that's going to be publicly released. And it will also be kind of providing the guidance for what types of projects are going to be run in the future. So we're at the end now, we're pretty close to the end. And so now's the time to get opinions and ideas from the worldwide community on the document that's being prepared by the National Institutes of Health. So you can look at the research priorities right now and you can give your thoughts. And that includes proposing things that you think should be there, but they're missing. That's open to anyone to do. Those ideas are going to be reviewed, and um, the topic leaders like myself will be looking at those with other groups and incorporating those into the final report. Now, it is a time-limited opportunity, so the, the time frame to get public input is March 8th. Uh, this is 2024. As of today, when I'm releasing this video, it's March, it's February 26. And so that gives you about 11 days before the commentary period is uh, ended. So 11 days uh, if you're listening to this video on Monday when I'm releasing it. So not a lot of time, but fortunately it's a pretty easy process. So if you've got an idea that you wanna share or if you just wanna look at the ideas, you can do that right now pretty easily. So to review the ideas, to review the research priorities and to submit your own ideas or to make comments on the existing ideas, you have to use a site called Idea Scale. And I'm gonna tell you how to do that really quickly. It's not very difficult. I think it's a good site for gathering ideas. So it looks, it looks quite good to me. So what you're gonna do, I've got a link at the description below. You can click on that link. That's gonna take you directly to the NIH Idea Scale site. It's gonna look just like this, you can see a description of the topic area, which is MECFS. And you can kind of see that there's a list of how many ideas have been posted, how many comments there are. So that gives you general information. Now, if you scroll down a little bit on that first page, you're going to see the eight MECFS topic areas. And this is really the core of the comments that we want are on these eight areas. So there are eight areas. These are kind of eight perspectives or eight topic areas that we were using to investigate MECFS. So as you can see in the list, uh, there was the nervous system. This is the one that I led. There's the immune system, metabolism, genomics, genetics, chronic infection, physiology, less studied pathologies, kind of more rare uh, diseases and then circulation. 
You can click on any one of these, any one that interests you. So if you want to focus more on nervous system, you can do that. If you are more interested in the circulatory system, you can look at that. So it's really up to you, or you can look at all of them. I'm going to click on nervous system just as an example. You can look at the research priorities when you click on that or any of the other topic areas. And you can see the priorities, and those priorities are really, you know, the document is going to be much larger than these priorities, but these, these research priorities are really, really important. And so I would like for people to look at those and really think, is there something that should be here that's not here? So it is still possible to propose new research priorities to incorporate into this nervous system uh, plan. So you can do that. You can also click on ideas so you can look at the research priorities and then you can see what other people have proposed to incorporate into the research priorities. And so you can click on ideas that's at the, the top there. I think it's on the, yeah, on the far, at the top on the left. And when you click on the ideas, you see a different page, which is each idea has its own little box. And I'm showing kind of the first six here. And you can click and read the full idea. And you can also see if there's comments on the ideas. And then after the um, commentary period is done, then NIH and other groups will look at the ideas and the comments associated uh, with those. So that's the main thing. Again, to recap, look at the research priorities, look at the ideas, and um, see if you want to submit your own ideas. That is part of the process. Now. Looking at the ideas and looking at the research priorities, you can do that by just going onto the site. You don't need any special permissions to do that. You can click on it. You can click anywhere that I just showed you. All that's accessible uh, very easily. If you want to submit your own idea or your own comment on an idea, for that you have to have an account. And it is not difficult to set up. It's very straightforward. If you can see at the top, there's a, you know, submit your idea. If you don't have an account, if you click on submit your idea, it's going to ask you to log in or sign up. I just, I just did it a few minutes ago and it was pretty easy to do. Uh, there's also an NIH video about the process. I'm going to put that link below, but I found it was pretty easy to to log in without any kind of instructional video. If you're kind of, if you look at the links, you'll see, hey, Click here to start an account, put in your email, a little bit of information, and then you can go right into posting. So that's the that's the basic thing uh, I wanted to cover this week. Uh, this is not my typical video that covers research, but these opportunities do not come around very often. And so I wanted people to know that they really have a chance to participate in the conversation about where MECFS research should go. And I think it's important enough to spend some time talking about that. I really want to recommend uh, that people send ideas. If there's something that has just been in your head for a long time about MECFS and you didn't have a place to communicate that, uh, this is your chance to put that in. Uh, I will say, do not worry at all if you are not a scientist. In fact, it's best that you're not a scientist. And I say that because really, we already know what the scientists have to say about MECFS. And we know that because scientists publish their papers and we read them and scientists give presentations and we listen to them. And so the researchers already have an opportunity to get out their thoughts. What we're really interested in and what I think NIH is interested in is what do other people think who don't have the opportunity to get their ideas out there? I think when, when we're tackling a difficult problem, the best process draws from a diversity of perspectives. And the idea that turns out to be the one that ultimately solves the problem, that idea can come from anywhere. And so we, we don't want to shut down particular areas of conversation. That idea could be an observation that a parent makes about their child with MECFS. And maybe it's an observation that we scientists just 
it was right there, but we just didn't catch it. We didn't ask the right question. We didn't notice that thing. And that observation may end up being the clue that allows us to solve the whole problem. That There's precedent for that. That can happen. So I, again, I do want to encourage people to submit ideas. If you've got something that you think is really important, this is uh, your chance. So that's it for this week. I'm going to continue talking about MECFS and fibromyalgia and long COVID and uh, Gulf War illness and mast cell disorder and many other diseases uh, every Monday. You're welcome to subscribe to the channel. You can see I just started this uh, new uh, series of videos and this is number five. So if you're interested, you can listen to me talking about the newest research on these topics once a week. And I want to Thank you for listening to this one, and I'll be sending some more important information to you very soon.